on, is it good or is it trash? I've seen this thing trashed in so many videos now that I wanted to just throw in my two cents, my experience, my knowledge, my understanding of how this is supposed to be used because what I understand or how I would use this is a little bit different than what I see in a lot of those expert videos. That doesn't make them wrong, that doesn't make me right, that just makes this different. So the first thing I wanna ask you about this, is it good or is it trash, this expandable baton, is how you think it should be used. And a lot of times, you're going to see this. And I saw a really good SWAT video where the instructor showed correctly that you shouldn't have a big swinging motion, that you should come from the shoulder, and you could be striking in front of you. And that's how I say, fight with a stick. Always fight with a stick in front of your body between you and the threat. So is it good as it trash? This expandable baton is very simple, it's very hard. And this one, I have a cheap one over there that I just couldn't get myself to use but this one was sent to me recently. This is a police quality. Uh, you see these in all kinds of police forces around the world. It's just a simple baton. This is not the one that's flexible, although those are very popular too. It's just a simple baton that a police officer, the police officers down here in this area, the sheriff's deputies and the local police all carry these. And I have to talk, and good. Shannon says she has two, but they're Ill uh, illegal in California. We're gonna talk to that in just a minute, because that's a very important part of this whole discussion. Is it good or is it trash for a self-defense weapon? But I wanted to show you the techniques first, because as I see these, they're always demonstrated with these slashing strikes designed to create damage to the bones, to the body, to open somebody up. And I've seen these used, I've seen them in action, and I see how ineffective they are when you use them like that. And Matthew says, good evening. And they're also illegal in New Jersey. So let me know, are they illegal in your state? If they are, say illegal in and then put your state in and we will talk about that too. Um, David says, if you use them the same way you would collie sticks, yes, I've seen them used the same way as a scream of collie sticks, which is funny because that's not how a traditional police baton, which is simply a baton that does not expand, doesn't come out like this, a simple police baton, the old style, the kind that the military still has, the shore patrol, those old Navy salty dogs used to carry these. My, my father had one. He was in the Marine Corps. He was a sergeant. And I remember I still have his somewhere. And it's about this long. It's a hard piece, probably oak or hickory. And it's a, they call it, used to call it a billy club, right? But it's basically a club. And if you use it as a swinging club or as a slashing club and you are fighting against somebody or a group of people who are full of adrenaline, full of drugs, full of anger, full of intent to hurt and harm, you see what happens. You see it all the time. There's so many videos where you see these things just bouncing off of people and they just keep coming. Or the uh, police officer, the security, they're swinging in the military. They have these big ineffective swings and the person closes distance and it doesn't even hit them. But it's this motion which is ineffective. So in that case, the expandable baton is trash. In my opinion, it is not an effective self-defense tool because these slashing techniques, you can generate a lot of power and yes, there will be damage. They'll probably later after the fight, if you survive, you'll hear that they had to go to the hospital and they had some contusions and some broken bones, possibly. You'll hit them in the head, maybe even a fracture on the skull. That all happens and can happen with these swing but they're so ineffective, they will not stop somebody who is high on drugs or somebody who's in just lost their mind. And uh, if you've ever been in law enforcement, I talk to uh, several law enforcement people all the time, they'll tell you all the time about incidents where the person was so either high on something or they were just so full of, um, they, they had so much mental illness or they were so full of adrenaline that when the batons came out, they were completely ineffective. And so a lot of police officers won't even pull this out. And the main reason, all the police officers I talk to around here say the same thing. No, I will not take this out. I won't even pull it out of the holster. There's a little holster that comes with this. And let me close that, close that again. And you can see it's real small. So people see these on Amazon and other places. They, oh, that's a, and they're, they always call them something like a tire thumper. And to, to get around those restrictions, which are stupid because Amazon should do a better job and other people we're gonna talk about jabbing with them. Shannon said you can't jab with them. I'm gonna show you how to jab with them because that's part of my answer and how you could use it for self-defense if you already invested in this and it's legal where you are. 
So many places you cannot carry this. You have this in your car and you get pulled over. This is considered to be a deadly weapon. They will assume that your intent is to hurt somebody with it. Since Amos says illegal in Ireland, you can't use it in Ireland. I know you can't use it in Scotland. You can't have these in England. You can't have these in France. There's so many places where these are completely illegal. You can't carry them unless you're law enforcement. If you're law enforcement, you are allowed to have it. It's the same thing with my PR-24, which is that side handle baton that I got when I was in the military, in law enforcement. That's when I got it, when I was allowed to carry it. And then I learned how to teach it to others and I had a license to teach it. That's since expired, but it never leaves the, never leaves the dojo, the dojo, right? We just have it here for educational purposes. So um, I don't know about in Florida either, Garen, and that's where I am. Garen, where are you in Florida? But put that, put in the comments, if where you live, in the comment section, not just the chat, but put in the chat too, but in the comments, if you would, is this legal where you are? Have you considered carrying one of these and you did a little research and you found out that even though you may have bought one because they called it a tire thumper or glass breaker or something else, you still can't carry it. All right, so let's talk about how you would use it. Let me say one more time. This, even though it looks impressive, even you turn your whole body into it, you bring it out quickly, you snap it, even though that looks impressive, that is not effective for self-defense. The way an old police baton was used, very similar to the way your rifle is used in hand-to-hand -hand combat. When you run out of bullets in a war, I'm gonna load the camera a little bit. You run out of bullets, they say fix bayonets. You stick the bayonet on there, and then you're hooking and jabbing, right? And then the bayonet breaks off. Then you still have that rifle in your hand. And that's the way that the bayonet is supposed to be used for self-defense, for law enforcement. This is a very effective tool if once you've opened it, and if it's made, if it's not a cheap piece of um, Chinese, no offense to Chinese people, but Chinese manufactured drop ship, Alibaba, AliExpress, FB, whatever they call it, you know, the, the Amazon garbage that they sell, and they call it something that it's not just so they can get around the law. If you got one of those, like I've got one of those, that piece of garbage is not gonna be able, to, you're not gonna be able to defend yourself. If it's a quality one, this one comes from the, 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 my online store, uh, Century Martial Arts. They provide this one, and this one is actually the same quality because I compared it to my detective friend who had his in the car. This is the same one. It's, I don't know if it's made the same way. Oh, look at that. I don't know if you can see it. It says Taiwan. It's made in free China, not communist China. Maybe that's why this is such a high quality piece. I'm just gonna throw that in real quick. I'll probably get banned and shadow banned or whatever. But this comes from the country of Taiwan. So it's a little bit better made. Now, if you hold on to this, when it's in the expanded position, you can very effectively thrust. I'll put a hole in that bag. I almost felt it. You can thrust and go into the throat, the face, the th all for self-defense. Anytime you're thrusting, and you can do it with this side or you can do it with this side. Brandon, it's good to see you. Um, Garen said, yeah, uh, D-cell mag light, the old style mag lights. I've got, ton, I got one in the car, I've got one in the, in the bedroom, I've got one in the garage right when you go outside, and they're all there for when the power goes out or if I need a self-defense tool. You come in, you're shining that light, bam, and you've got it in your hand, but it's just a jabbing, thrusting weapon. That's the most effective for self-defense. So law enforcement would have been taught years ago. Now I'm just gonna say, they don't give law enforcement enough training. They don't. They don't give police officers enough training. That's why you have so many police officers who are um, finding themselves in trouble when the community doesn't support them anymore and they've had some incident of using too much force or what seems to be too much force because they always take it out of context and you don't really know the true story. I'm a big fan of law enforcement and I know that, but I, at the same time, people, we all make mistakes. And there are idiots out there and there are jerks and there are people who go too far in every single field and every profession in the world. So yes, there are bad cops, there are bad whatever, but the cops are there to protect us. So we want them to have the best training possible. And what they do is they give them one of these and they learn how to do this a few times when they go through the academy. And then that's it. They never use it again. They should have ongoing training. And when you pull it out, you go first right here between the belly button and the private parts is that thin fascia of muscle, and that's a target. A good law enforcement, a good police officer who has the right training knows that if he puts that right through there, he's gonna stick him on the ground and he's not gonna have to 
pull something out and do excessive force. And he's also not going to have to break his brains and try to bash his head in for self-defense. When law enforcement get these, the reason that they should be banned, and I saw Icy Mike say, should they be banned? That's his question. And he talked about that very principle. Why most police officers will not take this out. One is because of the liabilities and there's no, seemingly no protection for police officers with liability anymore. Number two, they don't want to, they know it doesn't work. They can beat that guy 20 times and he just keeps coming. But if, and yes, uh, Garen says a tactical pin, uh, practical, yes, I picked one up this weekend. I'm going to do one of those on the, this week. We'll talk about how to use the tactical pin, the Kubaton, the Yawara, the palm stick. But when you have this in your hand and it's fully open, you jab with it. You jab straight through the center line. What can you remove or destroy for self-defense? Their ability to see temporarily, permanently, breathe temporarily, take their teeth down their throat, permanently through the throat, coming down into the solar plexus, their ability to breathe and stand upright, a little bit lower, right into that fascia. You put that into a spasm, they'll go straight to the ground. And it's a quick, fast, explosive, simple jab, stepping in with your whole body. And because your hands are here, you're not gonna miss the target very much. And whatever you do, and here's, here's how it works. If they're full of drugs or adrenaline or anger, or frustration, whatever, they're coming in and you're swinging here, and that bounces off of them a couple times, they close the gap, they got that knife, you're in big trouble, right? If you pull this out and immediately come straight through the middle, your hand is here, this hand is here just to support. When it's open like that, it doesn't collapse. It doesn't collapse very easily. It takes a lot of force, and if it does, it doesn't matter because this part is still coming in. This hand is just sort of guiding it, right? It's starting to loosen, there we go, it's loosening up here. Comes all the way in. Even if that comes all the way in, and you have two hands on it, you have an effective weapon in this position. From here, you can shug through the middle. You can drive your elbows. You can go through their face. Whip it back out. If you have it here, imagine that hard piece of metal against teeth. The metal wins against nose, against glasses, eyes, right? Against jaw, against throat, against their chest, against those, the, the sternum and then the nerves all in there. Against their, their hands are coming up. They're trying to grab and you blast through that arm right? This is very effective as a pushing weapon, a shoving weapon. And you step and your whole body is behind that. And then you just let the stick do the work. You let the expandable baton do the work. So you have thrusting and shoving motion. You can also strike with the sides like you would a, an old fashioned police baton, not a, an expandable baton. When they came up with these, and I remember uh, in law enforcement, we have one of these that, yeah, you can use it as a leverage weapon. And there's all kinds of takedowns and stuff like that. But the, the point is, in, in, in the moment, right, the moment that the guy comes out and he might have a knife or he's coming in, no police officer is pulling this out to defend against the knife. They pull this out to defend against the knife because they know that the chances of them hitting him and him still coming through and they don't get to go home and see their family are very real, right? So what they do is they do this. But if you have no choice, if this is your self-defense weapon, and as he's coming forward and lunging, and you stick that right through his middle, you're gonna do much more damage. You're gonna create much more force. You might create enough to knock him back or knock him out, striking here, striking through the throat, striking through the face, and actually turn off his operating system so you don't have to worry about trying to defeat the knife. If instead you're trying to swing and swing and, sw and you miss, it becomes a very ineffective trash weapon. So yes, it is a trash weapon if you use it as a swinging weapon. But if you, uh, Brandon says, yeah, you hit yourself 100 times with the knife defense. Absolutely, you will. You'll, just, you'll do more damage to yourself using this as a swinging weapon. It's not a swinging whip. It's not a slat. It's not a, a collie stick or a scream or knee stick. And it's not a, it's not a sword. You, you can, it's just not effective. If you put your other hand on it and you thrust and you shove and you box a little bit, you can now become very effective with self-defense with this tool. The, the most effective thing is always going to be that thrust going straight in through the center line. Whichever hand has it, 
That foot for, comes forward and you thrust. But let's talk about the final piece. And um, uh, Fatima says, thank you, you're welcome. Again, please put in the comment section whether this is legal, if you can even have this. Uh, Senior Man said, Utah just passed license required for concealed carry. Oh, you got concealed carry, good for you. There's always clothing, you always have to hit it against something hard and I've got, I put holes in the mats doing that with this. But this weapon, and it's, this is great like this too. I prefer it like this if I had to immediately come out and go into almost like a kubaton or a, pa a palm stick, a yawara. I can come in and I can thrust in the stomach. I can thrust into the face and go all the way up, pushing here. I would rather use it like this before I open it. Then you can take it out and hit it like that. With this weapon, this, this is the final thing that I have to say about this and then I gotta kick out of here. You guys have been so awesome. It's not legal in most places. In fact, I don't know where, unless you're law enforcement, unless you're a police officer, I don't know where this is legal. And that's why you see these all the time listed on Amazon and other places saying that it is a tire knocker or a tire thumper for, for truck drivers or it's a um, window breaker, and it's not. It, it's, it's a beat somebody over the head weapon. That's what it is. It's a police expandable baton. There's only one reason for it, right? In the, not in California. Um, Random American says not in California. Where else is it not legal? I know it's not legal in Ohio because my police officer friends in Ohio, we would talk about it all the time, same discussion. None of them will carry it, or they all carry it. They have to carry it. It's part of their, their web gear, their black gear but none of them will take it out because of the liability issues that, and it looks bad. If there's a video of the police officer whacking on the, and there's there a ton of, ton of them on YouTube, right? Where the police officer is just whacking the guy, beating him, and he just keeps coming, just keeps coming. But instead, if you know how to use it correctly and you use it like the old style, a police officer from 1940, before they were invented, would have had a baton a riot baton, that's what they call it, a riot baton. He'd have a riot baton and he'd stand next to his uh, brothers and sisters in blue and they would step. They'd take one step at a time and they would jab, jab, jab. And anything that they hit is gonna be moving back. They're gonna move anything back if you step and you jab, and you step and you jab. But then these things were invented and I, th and I think I remember seeing them come out of Japan first. The Japanese police maybe used the expandable baton that was more of a spring at the beginning. It's just basic, but that makes sense. In Asia, you know, you can still get caned and whipped. In the Philippines or in Indonesia, if you do the wrong thing, say the wrong words or I don't know, whatever, right? God bless America for being so free. We don't, we don't get whipped in public, but they do in other countries, but they use flexible weapons because they don't break bones. And that's the whole purpose of using the flexible weapon was supposed to create damage or force somebody to stop, but not hurt them, not kill them. But if you, have, um, if you have this and you need it for self-defense, just remember, don't swing with it. It is trash unless you thrust, shove, and even boxing. As long as you use it to keep your hands together and get them really, really strong. Yeah, you can. <laughs> um, all right, you guys have been awesome. I was trying to read some of the comments. But please put it in the comments section below. Is this, is the expandable baton, do you think it's trash? Is it a good weapon? And if you do, put your answers why. This is a discussion. In my experience, the expandable baton and how to use it, knowing how to use it and having carried one and have to use it, then, um, yeah, uh, Jim, uh, Johnny says, police are taught to jab with their, their 36 inch riot batons. That's exactly what I mean. So this expanded is a perfect riot baton and that's how it should be used. It should never be used for this, although most police departments, most police academies are taught the swinging motions, take out the legs, hit the elbows, hit the, and it's, and it's just, I think it's, it's institutional crap, right? They, they've just been doing it for so long, no one's ever really thought about, should they continue to teach something that's so ineffective? And it's because, and they can just measure it because when the guys get out in the field, none of them use it anymore. You know, no one's going to pull it out. And the ones who do are going to make it on YouTube and it's going to be them whipping on somebody's head and it not being very effective. Jeremiah, it's good to see you too. It has been a while. So 
put, but put in your comments below. What did I miss? What do you think? What do you think about Icy Mike? Icy Mike, hard to hurt. He had his video on it. I saw another video by a SWAT guy talking about uh, the most effective way and how to use it. I wouldn't use it that way. Icy Mike, he had great points. Everything he said, is it legal? Is it effective? Is it legal? Is it effective? Is it legal? Is it effective? No, 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 no. He had zero. He drew a Venn diagram. There, was no inter there were no points. So there was no intersection. I get it. I get it, Icy Mike. I get it hard to hurt, Icy Mike. Um, I think that's his name. But, but, but again, it's just like the Kubaton. Is it a trash weapon? Or is there a different way to use it? Is there a different way to think about it? I like to say that just because maybe I'm older and I've been, around, I've been proven wrong so many times, it's not good, it's not bad, it's different. Not good, not bad, different. So maybe it's not trash, maybe it's just different. If you think of it in a different way, you use it in a different way. How would you use it? Is it legal in your state? Please put that in the comment section below. You guys have been awesome. I'll see